Hello and good evening. Welcome to the Albanian Mosaic. I'm your host, Joseph Goichai, and we will be introducing our fourth part of the series dedicated to the ethnic Albanian territory of Ilirida. Last time, we closed the chapter of Kosova as we added the last piece discussing the diaspora of Kosovars in the United States. And this week, we will take a look into the brief background history of Ilirida. Today's ethnic Albanians from Macedonia are believed by scholars to be the descendants of the Illyrians, officially recorded in 2000 BC, and were an Indo-European population that evolved from the Stone Age, who spanned throughout the Balkans from modern-day Slovenia into parts of Greece. During the establishment of the Balkans, when nationality and sovereign identity of each ethnic group emerged, Albanians identified themselves as Dardani, which was an Illyrian tribe that occupied Dardania in the first century BC. This is the ancient name of present-day Kosova and parts of Macedonia, which was then occupied by the Roman Empire in 6 AD and then the Byzantine Empire that same year. The ancient cities of Ulpiana and Skupi, now known today as Skupi, fell under the realm of Dardani during the Byzantine Empire. During the Slavic migration of 4 AD, the Slavs settled in the Balkans and began a campaign to take the lands of the Illyrians, including Dardani. As the Ottoman Empire was on the rise in a war to convert the Balkans into Islam, both Albanians and Slavs defended their territories against Islam during the First Balkan Wars. During the Second Battles, Jirch Kastrioti Skanderbeg and his troops moved in and tried to prevent further advancement of the Ottoman Empire but were defeated by the Ottomans and they took control of Dardani in 1448 after they defeated Skanderbeg's Christian forces. After the fall of Skanderbeg's army in 1468, the majority of Albanians from Dardani came under the Ottoman Empire, which created Kosovo Vilayet, consisting of present-day Kosova, Struga, Gostivar, Tetov, and Shkupi as its main capital for Kosovo. This lasted all the way until World War I, when the Ottoman forces were defeated in the Balkans in 1908. When Albanians declared independence from the Ottoman Empire in 1912, Kosovo, along with Shkupi, were included in their territory. However, under harsh criticism and boycott, the Kingdom of Yugoslavia was then awarded Kosovo, Tetov, and Shkupi, now dubbed Vadar Macedonia now dubbed Vardar Macedonia, under the Treaty of London in 1913. When World War II started, Italy occupied Albania in 1939 and reclaimed all of the ethnic Albanian lands into one territory in the Balkans under Albania. Once again, Tetov and Shkupi were given back to Yugoslavia when the Allied forces defeated the Axis power in 1945. Afterwards, the Yugoslavians and Albanians had somewhat tense relations, especially over the claims of ancient Dardani and Ottoman Kosovo Vilayet. The ounce of good relations they adopted started to dwindle in the 1980s, when the Albanians were being discriminated against and often called immigrants by the Yugoslavians. It wasn't until the rise of Slobodan Milosevic that the identity of the Albanians in Vardar Macedonia and Yugoslavia would be threatened. Because of this, many of the Albanian activists within in Vardar Macedonia in Struga also proclaimed the founding of the Republic of Ilirida with the intention of autonomy or federalization inside Vardar Macedonia. The declaration had only symbolic meaning and the idea of an autonomous state of Ilirida was not officially accepted by the ethnic Albanian politicians nor the Macedonians. During the course of beginnings of ethnic cleansing in Kosovo in the late 90s, Macedonia tried to remove all of their ethnic Albanians from the province of Ilirida by first sacking jobs that were predominantly held by Albanians, such as cafe workers, merchants, and teachers, which left many of the Albanians from Macedonia jobless and homeless. During the NATO bombing campaign of Yugoslavia, the United States ordered Macedonia to open its borders to more than 400,000 Kosovar Albanians, who were expelled from the region seeking refuge in their country. Macedonia agreed to the border openings, however, had reservations on how the move would affect their country in the long run. On August 13, 2001, the leaders of the Macedonian parties signed the Ohr Agreement, 
which ended the clashes between Macedonian forces and the ethnic Albanian rebels from the National Liberation Army. With the Ohrit Agreement signed, the Macedonian government pledged to improve the rights of the Albanian population. That makes up 25% of their population. The leaders of the National Liberation Army agreed to give up any demands to fully recognize all Macedonian institutions and disarm and hand over their weapons to NATO forces. I want to thank you for joining us tonight for the first presentation of the Albanian Mosaic covering Ilirida. Please tune in next week for our second piece where we cover the music of Ilirida. Take care and have a great evening.